Father, we ask that you bless us tonight. Your word says those that appear in Zion, they go from strength to strength. You have appeared tonight, Father. Cause us to go from strength to strength. Cause us to go from grace to grace. Cause us to go from glory to glory. In Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 3, verse 7. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sealed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Praise God forevermore. So we began to see that when we don't see from wrong, when we don't see life from God's perspective, what will happen? We would waste our life pursuing what? Things that won't last. Amen. When we see life from a wrong perspective, when we don't see from divine perspective, when we don't see from the perspective of God, we will invest our life pursuing things that will not last. Praise God forevermore. And this has taken us to the book of John, chapter 6, where the people took boats. We can start from verse. I just want to pick from verse. Okay, let's just read. John chapter 6, let's read from verse 22. So these guys, Jesus Christ had performed the miracle. Of course, we'll be looking at this, okay? I just just want us to refresh our memory. Because to me, it feels like a year (laughs) that we went on break. Amen. For the conference week. Amen. So the day following, let's, let's, let's move. We've, we, we, we've read this over and over, right? So, Jesus Christ has fed them with bread, right? So, on this particular day, they didn't see Jesus and his disciples. So, they took shipping to look for Jesus as though they were really interested in Jesus. By the end of the day, we found out that they were not interested in Jesus, okay? They were interested in what Jesus could do for them. I, I even said it well. They were interested in what they could use Jesus to achieve. Praise God. So Jesus had become a tool in their hands. Okay? For them to achieve their personal satisfaction. So what those guys were actually after was bread, right? Earthly things. But they put in a lot of energy, a lot of resources in pursuing things. That won't last. Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Amen. So I'm actually God wants to put his fire upon you. Okay? So you are no longer a child. You must now go all out to pursue the Lord. You must spend time asking for his fire. You must spend time seeking his face. You want to put his fire upon you. You must be in the closet. Your heart must be chasing Jesus. Don't mind your brother and your sister. So don't mind them. Don't mind them. Just be chasing Jesus. Like let your heart be looking for him. Do you understand? Let them be wondering what has happened to this girl. Spend time praying. Spend time reading the Bible. Studying the word of God. So you can carry God's fire for your own generation. He has plans to put his fire on you. But you have to want it. Okay? Jesus was 12 when he already knew what he wanted. And he was going for it. Hmm? So you have to want it. You see, the fire does not just rest after sadly. The fire of God rests on those who want it. You see, God asks people, God wants to give his fire to everybody, but I know what I'm saying. But God again now has to do that. He wants to put his fire on. But even though God has a plan to put his fire on those people, he can't put his fire on them if they don't want it. And now the Lord finds out that they want it is that they are chasing it. They are looking for it. So let your mom be wondering what has happened to my child. Like, let us see that hunger and passion for Jesus that nobody can stop. You see, 
There's a level of hunger and passion for Jesus that we exhibit that it becomes impossible for people to stop us. You see, when people can still stop you from serving the Lord, hmm? because they have not yet seen your passion. Are you with me? Praise God forevermore. So it's now time for you to go out and look for Jesus so you can carry his fire for your own generation. Not just a personal fire. It's fire for your own generation. Amen. Amen. Praise God forevermore. So Jesus had become a tool in the hands of these people. And I said that sadly, this is the story of some Christians. Jesus has become merely a tool in our hands. Amen. A tool to achieve our personal, selfish, and evil desires. When I mean evil, I don't mean sinful. Evil is not equal to sinful. Evil is just what is not in the will of God. Are you following? You see, whenever we put forth our hand to reach out for anything, can you say anything? Whenever we put forth our hand to reach out for anything that is not in the will of God, are you following me? We have begun to engage evil. What we have reached out for is evil. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Are we together? So we must be careful that Jesus does not become a tool in our hands. And Jesus becomes a tool in our hands when we see life from a wrong perspective. Are you following me? Because you see, when we see life from a perspective that is not the perspective of God, we will live as survivors. Hmm? We will live with a survivor mindset. And this will cause us to be anti-Christ. Praise Jesus, save our Lord. We will be wanting what God does not want. Okay? We will be chasing what God is not interested in. Even using God as the tool for such pursuit. Are we together? Amen. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Amen. So they called him rabbi. They said, verse 25, And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when came as thou here? As if they cared. Praise Jesus forevermore. You see, the pursuit of worldly things is so deceptive. Hmm? Are we together? Worldly things in itself is deceptive. Then the pursuit of it is what? So deceptive. Why? Because a man can be pursuing the world in the name of Jesus. Are we together? A man can be what? A man can be pursuing the world. A man can be in pursuit of the world in the name of Jesus. Using Jesus as a cover-up. You think the man cares so much about Jesus. You think the man loves Jesus so much. You think he's so passionate about Jesus. Okay? But actually, what he's passionate about are the things of the earth. So they said, Master, Rabbi, when came Ms. Dawida, when did you come here? They didn't care. Okay? But I told you that even though this, this kind of life is so deceptive, deceptive, that you can almost not be able to judge it, except the Lord shows you. <laughs> okay? I told you that the ultimate proof is that this kind of people will depart from following the Lord, eventually. Are we together? Amen. I don't plan to do the whole of this chapter 6. Amen. Are we still together? I'm going to stop at verse 27. I think, yeah, verse 27. That's where I'll stop. Amen. But if you read the whole of chapter 6, you see a lot of stuff. It's a, one, it's, a very, it's a very wonderful chapter, passage of the scripture, John chapter 6. Amen. You see, you might not be able to judge 
and you don't really have to, particularly in others. You might not only be able to judge when people are following Jesus because of a wrong passion, because of a wrong desire. Okay? But you must pray to be able to judge it in yourself. Are we together? You must pray that the Lord will give you light to see, to show you your heart's disposition in your pursuit of the Lord. Amen. So, you see, you might not be able to tell, except the Lord shows you, except the Lord tells you, shows you. When people are following the Lord in this manner, you see, these are not unserious people. Are you following me? Like, if you're going to put it in Christian terms, like as believers, these are the people committed to church. Are we together? Are we together? Like they were committed to church in every sense of it. Nothing would hold them back. Are you following me? But the reason for their commitment to church, to Jesus, to the things of God, is what? Is bread. Do you understand? Like how can you tell that a man who is fully committed to the things of the Lord, in his passion, in the way he does things, in his giving and all of that, in the punctuality, in being part of the work. Are we together? How can you tell? <laughs> How would you be able to say that it's for bread? You possibly can't tell, right? You can't tell. I said the Lord shows you. Okay? But I'm telling you that eventually the litmus test that a people are following the Lord because of bread, no matter how passionate they did it, the proof that they were following from bread is that eventually they will what? They will go back. They'll stop following him. Give me that place quickly around there. I think verse 60 something. Find it. They will go back. They will go back. <laughs> After all what they said, blah, 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 blah. Let me show you. Uh Look at verse 65. (laughs) Amen. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Can you read for yourself? From that time, many of his disciples did what? (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. I can hear and watch no more with him. <laughs> Are we together? From that time, many of who? His disciples. Like they were who? Disciples. Can you say disciples? How many of them? This is not the twelve. Four. Like many. Those of them that took shipping and they came. Master, when did you come here? We missed you. We missed you. We missed your teaching. We missed you so much. When did you come here? All of them, plus those that were in the area. Many. They stopped following him. They went back and walked no more. Like their walk with Jesus stopped. Hey. Hey, friends, can I talk to you? You see? Your walk with Jesus will eventually stop if you are following him for bread. No, it will stop. It 100%. Are you following me? You see, those who are following for bread will eventually go back. Are we together? So I told you the last time we met that don't be afraid of going back. If you are really following him with your heart, for his sake, you will follow him to the end. I'm telling you the truth. To go back is not easy. You see, to go back is that you were never really following. And do you hear what I said? Do you understand? To go back is that what? I showed you, I said, they left our churches. Why? Because they were never with us. If they were with us, they would have what? Continued. 
So continuing is proof that you were originally a part of it. Hmm? So don't be afraid about this, your work with Jesus. Only be sure that you are truly working with him with your heart. That you are truly following him for his sake. Not for the sake of bread. For his sake, for the sake of his kingdom. Are we together? You see? So, people can be so passionate. Just stay there. People can be so passionate about following the Lord, about following Jesus. You see them committed to church, to church work. You see them, they are individuals, they are everywhere. They give and all of that. You can't tell. <laughs> but the reason why so many people are doing it is for bread. Glory to Jesus. It's for what? It's for bread. So eventually, one day, it will be proven that they were never with the Lord. It will be proven that they were never following the Lord with their heart. And how will it be proven? They will go back and stop walking with him. Amen. Praise God forevermore. You see, if I pray for you that may you not go back, may you stop walking with him, it's not true. Are we together? I can pray for you that may you truly walk with him. That may your heart truly walk with him. May you be in true fellowship. May you truly be walking with him. <laughs> are you following? Because if you are truly walking with him, you will walk with him to the end. Hey. Friends, are you with me? If you are truly walking with him, you do what? So the prayer is, Father, help me to walk with you. You see, these are my prayers. Just when you're by hearing. Jesus, let me walk with you. <laughs> are you with me? Because if you truly walk with him, he will take you. He can't leave you behind. <laughs> are we together? If you truly walk with him, you will end where he is. For Enoch walked with God. And he was not. Why? For God took him. And Enoch walked with God. And he was not. For God took him. You see, God always takes every man that walks with him. I go to prepare a place for you. <laughs> That where I am there, what? You may be also. Believe in God. Believe in me also. In my father's house, there, were, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. That what? Where I am. You may be also. Okay. And I talk to you, my friends. Jesus is not joking with your life. Concerning this is your salvation, concerning this is your work with Jesus, Jesus is not what? He's not joking. He's not careless. Oh, if you are working with him, he will take you. Are you with me? He will do what? No, I'm, I'm, I'm sure he will take you. Where he is is where you will what? You will be. Okay. If you are truly working with him with your heart. Sincerely. With your heart. Even when you fall. You will rise again. Because the righteous can fall seven times. He can fall completely. But he will what? He will rise again. Why? He's righteous. His heart is in alignment with the Lord. Are you following? Shout hallelujah. Friends, you will continue. I said you will continue. You will continue. Don't be afraid. Some of you are thinking you will stop following the Lord. Some of you are even afraid of the Lord blessing you. You are thinking that, God, don't bless me too much. So I will not stop walking with you. No, walk with him. When you walk with him, you will walk with him. You see, if you walk with him in the, in the days of your poverty, if you are truly walking with him, Abundance cannot stop you from working with him. Because whether poverty or abundance, nothing defines you. 
A man who is in a true relationship with Jesus, who is truly working with Jesus, is not defined by the things of the earth. Either, the, either lack or prosperity, don't define it. Are we together? Praise God forevermore. So don't be afraid. What you should seek and pray about and keep praying about is that your heart should be in alignment with the Lord. That your heart should be what? In sync. Don't be afraid. Because the Lord plans to bless you. I'm speaking to somebody right now. The Lord plans to what? But you're afraid. You think you'll go back. You see? Are you following me? Convert that fear to adding more fire to your work with God. Are we together? I said what? Convert that fear what? To adding more fire to, to your work with God. If you truly work with God, you will not go back. Even when the prosperity comes. Are we together now? Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. From that time, many of the disciples went back and walked no more with him. So any man following Jesus for bread, no matter how passionate he appears to be, will eventually what? Go back. So, when God blesses you, can you say when? Why did I say when? Because he will bless you. You see, when God blesses you and use, and if you stop coming to church, you will never come into church. You you did not come to church for one day. <laughs> Are we together? You see, if you've been in church for 10 years, committed, passionate, every day, you're always around. You give, you're so committed. Are you following me? In the days when the Lord has not yet blessed you, you know what I mean? Hmm? When the Lord eventually blesses you, because he will bless you. If any of you stop following the Lord, if you stop coming, let me use coming, let me, because one of the obvious ways we know that we are working with Jesus is our assembly, is our local church, our coming together with the brethren. So let me use what you understand. Before you start looking for work, work with Jesus. If you stop coming to church, if you stop being committed to church, eh, you were never committed to church. You never came for one day. You were just coming, hoping that one day God will bless you. You were just thinking as you were coming, every day you come. You are just thinking, I know one day, one day, one day it go better, you go better, you go better, you go better for me. I go get the money. But what is on the pastor is just stressing us. One day, one day, one day it go better. What is on kingdom, kingdom, kingdom? I'm a shall try. But we try, we'll keep trying our best. Because one day, one day. One day it go better. <laughs> come to just say more close. People have to come, so you're constrained me. One day, one day, one day it go better. <laughs> and when it better, I'll be so comfortable. I won't need to go to church early again. Because God will have answered my prayer. Hey, you see, if you are following Jesus because of prayer points <laughs> that you want him to answer, one day you will stop following him. Because can I tell you one thing about this Jesus? One day you'll find out that all your prayer points have been answered. <laughs> eh? I'm serious. God, I need a good job. God, a good car. God, a good house. God, plenty money. One day what will happen? All your prayer points will what? Will come to pass. So if prayer points <laughs> is the reason for your fervency, one day it's going to what? It's going to be lost. Because all your prayers will what? Will come to pass. You see, one of the things I'm sure that God will do for you. You see, I'm not God. Hmm? So I don't know any of you who is not following him sincerely. Or not. But that you are following him at all. <laughs> that I'm seeing you like this. One thing I'm sure that God will do for you is that he will bless you. No, I'm very sure of that one. Are we together? Amen. With material blessings, though, I don't know of the spiritual one. Spiritual blessings comes with the heart, following the heart. Amen. I'm sure it will bless you. But please, I'm begging you. 
that you have to ensure that you are following Jesus with your heart. Because the blessings will eventually come. The things you are praying for will eventually come. Hmm? And if that is all the reason for following Jesus, why would you still need to follow him when he has answered all your prayers? May you not stop following Jesus when he answered all your prayers. But it's not really a prayer. <laughs> because if you are following him now because you have many prayer points that he's here to answer, when he eventually answers, then you stop. So, but well, let me pray a real prayer for you. May your heart be in alignment with the Lord. May your heart be in sync with the Lord. May the burdens of the Lord be the burdens of your heart. May you be truly one with the Lord. Glory to Jesus. He then flew, Jesus Christ then looked at the two of you. See, in this matter of walking with Jesus, can I talk to you? If you want to go back, go royal. Hey, he does not send you. You see, the story of lives in 99, I couldn't do happy. Is it, is it different from this one? <laughs> eh? How many of you we have on dressing? And one of it goes away and will not leave the 99. Who was saying it? Jesus. Don't forget what he was saying in story. <laughs> what, what, what was he saying? A parable. Story loan so. There are many of you we we, we won't ship them is in. You don't leave the 99 and go after the one. <laughs> did, did you say that or did you not say that? To show you how God is passionate about one lost person. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> in this your work with Jesus can I talk to you you see when you are lost you, you need to understand the Bible if you are lost or you are lost in <laughs> oh son <laughs> if you are already lost or you are getting lost small small the passion in Jesus' heart to restore you is massive are you following me he can leave the 99 to come and find you one Hmm? Is that one okay? But if you choose, <laughs> are we together? If you choose to stop following him, it's okay. Like him, it's okay. he doesn't send you. you see? Many of his people stopped what? They went back and stopped doing what? Working with him. What did he do? He had only 12 people left. Maybe you will calm down and treat those people nicely. Every time, kingdom, kingdom, don't labor for earthly things. Focus on Jesus. Focus. But what is that Maybe you will calm down your preaching. Abi? so, 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 so. I'm the bread of heaven. I'm the bread of life. I came. Don't seek earthly things. All your church members have gone. <laughs> you know how many 12 elders left? Hey, Jesus Christ faced them. <laughs> what did he do? No, give me only that hand. He faced the, the twelve. Out of thousands of church members, <laughs> all of them left you. You only have twelve core members. <laughs> the eldership of the church. Look what he says what? They went back and walked no more. Can you say walk no more? So this deals with our walk with him. So they chose to not walk with him again. Hmm? So you see, on the, in the matter of your walk with Jesus, Jesus Christ wants to be sure, are you truly walking with me? Do you truly want to walk with me? There's no, you see, when it comes to the matter of our walk with Jesus, there's no time to waste. Jesus Christ doesn't have time for rubbish. Let's be clear, like, Chofe Bamiri, Abu Bamiri, Ma, Miuraye. To be fair, can answer prayer points, they only answer, but on this matter of work, do you want to walk with me? Let, tell me. It's a serious matter. Can I talk to you? Because walk with Jesus means that you now begin to show you his secret. Like he's letting you into his life. It's like having a very close friend, a confidant, that you're letting into all your life, all your secrets. So do you really want to be my friend at that level? Like, do you, do, are you, do you understand? Because walking with me means you are, are permitted into my life. So Jesus Christ, he looked at the twelve. What did he say? Will you also go away? 
What a strange pastor. <laughs> Are you following me? Will you what? Will you also go away? Share enough of them alone. Me around you. <laughs> Do you understand? Go, 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 join them by the law. And your dance. Share enough of them alone. I can start again. Only me. <laughs> Are you together? Are you together with me? It is a Peter, Peter. Please quickly run after those crowds. Tell them that I'm sorry for what I said. Tell them that tomorrow we are going to arrange another service. Miracle service. There will be bread. He didn't find a <laughs> oh. he didn't find a way to get them back. Hey, because walking with Jesus is a serious matter that we must take serious. It must be intentional. He didn't find a way to wind them. He didn't find a way to get them to stay. He even asked those who stayed. He said, are you sure you want to stay? Because it keeps getting tougher. No, this is not going to to Yeah, you know, she better do the rush. I never talk anything. Those people don't come out. Peter, Andrew, John. You should say, I won't stay. Because I still get plenty of things where I won't talk. Things where you don't go like. Your flesh don't go like her. So if you won't go now, quickly go. Make I start my ministry again from, from scratch. Oh, may God give us the heart of Jesus. You see, you know, you know that people that left were lifeless people. People who did, who did not want God. Are you following me? But today we are okay to keep people who don't want God in the church. We just want, let them just, we just want to keep them. They don't want God, they want bread. And we know it. But we want them to stay. So we say the things that will not let them go. We say the things that will let them stay. Lifeless people that are going nowhere. No work with Jesus. They are going nowhere. Their heart is on bread. We fill our churches with them and we just want to keep them there like that. May God help us. He said, will you also go away? Come and see the response of Peter. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? I'm not interested in to whom shall we go. Uh Thou ask what? Thou ask the words of eternal life. So what those people heard? Oh, wait, 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 don't rush. What then Peter are hearing that wants to make them stay is what? The words of eternal life. How many were they? Twelve. (laughs) What the multitudes that left what they were hearing that made them go is also what? What's of eternal life? Are you understanding? So you must be careful when your heart does not love the truth. They were hearing the same things. But their responses were different. You see? You understand? Because even though what Jesus, you see, Jesus Christ did not preach. He didn't preach the words of eternal life to twelve four. Then I was preaching something else to the multitudes. He was teaching of them what? The words of eternal life. But these words of eternal life offended many of his disciples. Are you following me? It offended the multitude. Why? Because what they want is what? Is bread. Are we together? Are we together? Amen. You see, when you are in pursuit of the world, truth will offend you. Oh, you didn't hear me. Did you hear what I said? I said what? When you are in pursuit of the word, what will happen? Truth will offend you. When you are living for yourself, truth will what? Will offend you. (laughs) Amen. When you are doing what? When you are living for yourself, what will happen? Truth will offend you. Can I talk to you? You see, truth is offensive. To any man that is carnal. Truth is offensive to a carnal mind. Are you following me? A spiritual mind sees truth and aligns. What truth does to people who are in search of it? Is that it brings alignment. They see where they are missing it. And they align. Are you following me? People whose hearts 
aright. People who are in a true walk, a true relationship with Jesus, when truth comes, what it does at what it aligns them. Because sometimes we miss it even in our walk with Jesus. So he brings truth to confront us. So if your heart is accurate, if your heart is right, what truth does as what it aligns you. But you see, when you are carnally minded, when you are carnal, when you are living for yourself, when truth confronts you, it offends you. So the words of eternal life, which is the hope of mankind, and the hope of God for mankind was offensive to some people that it made them go back from following Jesus. Oh, that Joseph, I'm tired of them. They're always preaching kingdom, kingdom. You talk about living for Jesus. Their own own is too much. Is it me that kill Jesus? Pastor, our pastor for life is too much. Let me just attend you. Let me just attend service. Hear the word and go. The pastor, we give the church a family. Church is family. Church is family. Your brother will offend you. You will offend your brother. You will apologize. You forgive yourself. No, me, I don't have time for those ones. Are we together? So if you are not, oh, friends, can you, can you hear me? Can you hear me? You see, when you are living for yourself, you will have many options. You may have what? Peter and the other guys did not have any other option. Because their heart was truly following Jesus. He said, to whom shall we go? So those that went back had a lot of other things to go back to. <laughs> because they never truly left anything to follow Jesus. Guys, what are you leaving to follow Jesus? Are you living your hunger? Are you living your impatience? Are you living your, your convenience? Are you living your comfort? You see, if you don't leave anything to follow Jesus, are you following me? Oh, praise Jesus forevermore. If you are not leaving anything to follow Jesus, are you following me? One day, the truth will offend you and you go back to the things that you have done left. Glory to God. Shout hallelujah. You see, to truly follow Jesus, you must be leaving things behind. Are you following me? Our walk with Jesus is a journey of departure. Are you hearing me? Every journey starts with a departure, right? If you are saying, if Olamide says she's going to church, what she for saying, even though she didn't say it, she's departing from the house. Oh, friends, can you hear me? Glory to God. Shout hallelujah. Amen. When Amaji told them in the house that I'm going to church, uh, one thing she didn't tell them, but which she told them in principle, is that I'm departing from the house. Are we together? Every journey begins with a departure. Are you following me? And journeys are sustained by what? By departure. Are you with me? Can you hear me? Journeys are what? Welcome to Inyekiti. Bye-bye to Inyekiti. Welcome to Aramoko. Goodbye to... Are you hearing me? Until you get to what? Ado. You understand? Eh? I thought you could get to those very far states. Welcome to Oshun State. You now drive, 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 drive. Goodbye to Oshun State. You go, 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 go. Welcome to Goodbye. So journeys are marked by many departures. Are you following me? You see, we can't welcome you into a new place if you have not departed from an old place. Hmm? The reason they said welcome to Ibadan is because we have departed from where? From Lagos. <laughs> you see, God is open and waiting to welcome many of us into many glorious things in Him. But we are not ready to depart from the former things. Are we together? Guys, we must be willing to embrace departures. <laughs> 
We must begin to wave goodbye. Wave goodbye to many things. Because if you don't wave goodbye to the former things, they will not receive you into the new. The former way of life, the, the life of comfort, the life of convenience. If you don't wave goodbye to it, you're not welcome into the new things of God. Are we together? So journeys are marked by what? Departures. So in every of, in, at every point in your journey with God, there must be departures. There will be things you are departing from. Friendships, relationships, places, people, habits, attitudes, lifestyles that you are departing from. Are you following me? You see, when you notice yourself departing from stuff, it's proof that you are being welcomed into new stuff. Are you following me? Because every time we depart from the old, we are welcome into what? The new. Oh, but many of us are afraid of departures. Are you following me? Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. To whom shall we go? Like we have completely departed from the old. Lord, we have nothing to go back to. You alone are our hope. You see, those guys went back because they did not depart. They didn't depart from anything. You thought they departed because they were really looking for him. Master, where are you? Where are you? They didn't depart. They had... Who? They were careful. Master! Hey, you Hope my house is still there. <laughs> she leave me, she will be my job. Hope is still. Hey, Jesus, we are following you. <laughs> Hope I'm still there. Don't back the bone off me. No, I'm not before. Jesus, we will tell you. Offender, be Jesus. Is my pride still there? In case anybody wants to mess up with me. Jesus is trying to follow, but you still look back. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> A young man, a young woman is still there. <laughs> if anybody tries me, he's still, he's, ah, keep it, keep it. But you are following Jesus. So people think you have departed. But you have not departed. <laughs> are we together? So that one day, <laughs> when truth confronts you, and you become offended, you can quickly run back. To the things you didn't depart from. But look, it looked as if you departed. Are you following me? Can I talk to you? You see, if you don't fully depart, you will depart. Let me say it. Did you get what I said? If you don't fully depart from many things, you will eventually depart from the law. Because you have things you have not departed from. You see, when you have things you have not departed from, you will have things you can depart to when you depart from the Lord. Are you understanding? Do you understand? When you have things, people, places, and be stuff that you have not departed from, you will have things to depart to when you eventually depart from the Lord. And I'm sure you will eventually depart from the Lord. You see, anyone who has not completely departed will depart from Jesus. He said, to whom shall we go? To whom? Whom? To whom shall we go? Eti basi waje in call and tell him. You have ruined our lives. So where, where do you want us to go? It's only you we know now. With all our jobs, everything, we've left it behind. We've, we've, where do I start from? I don't, I don't have CV again. I don't have certificate. I don't have anything. All my business, everything is gone. I don't, you are not saying, will I go back? Go back, call, go back. Is you? I will like you spoil my life. Now that you go back, spoil it. Finish. Is you only you have the word of eternal life. <laughs> this is also is, is very funny. After calling grown men, adult men, family men, you call them out of their businesses. You call them out of their life of comfort. Out of you know, this guy's a big. This guy, you know, my phone is just like boy, like boy, boy. 
They were big men. Oh. Ah, they were big men. Oh. I'm telling you the truth. Business moguls. Big boys in, in town. They now spoiled their life. They left all their business. They left everything to them. They'll be following up and down. To the point that they were hungry, that they were eating corn, that they didn't cook. They were stealing corn from all this one and eating. People who could feed a lot of people. People who had a lot of money. You turn into people that could not. You understand? So people now went away. Now you're not looking at them that will you also go back? Jesus, be careful. <laughs> be careful. <laughs> like, how can you do? Like, okay, where are we going back to? You know, better mind yourself. Ah, Lord, say, he be, ta, 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 ta. They started to play Mario. He be la mafkusi. <laughs> now, Jesus is here. We don't get any other place. Now, here we go die. Oh, friends, can, can you, can you completely depart from the things that will not let you walk with Jesus? Can you depart? You see, those other guys failed to depart. So they departed from Jesus. You see, can I talk to you? When you love yourself, when you are living for yourself, it will be hard to depart. Are you following me? It will be hard to depart from things that won't let you walk with Jesus. You see, for those guys, one of the things that won't let them walk with Jesus is love of their belly. Love of themselves, material. Love of material things. Okay? So when Jesus Christ called and said, you seek me because of your bread. You seek me. Stop it. When they found out that I was not going to give them bread again, they said, oh, our journey, our journey with this one has ended. So for, why did they bring sheep to come and meet him? They wanted bread. You understand? Ah, you didn't know. Well, I don't want to read these scriptures for you too much. <laughs> You understand? I'm trying to remember the verses. If I can quickly remember that as I'm teaching you. Praise God forevermore. He said, they said in one, in one verse, they said, what do you do? What sign do you show that we may believe that you are from God? He says, because Moses <laughs> gave our fathers bread. So they still went back to bread. Bread was the reason. Uh-huh. They said, therefore, to him, what sign she was down there that we may see? <laughs> And believe me, what does thou work? Kilo le she. Oni she yano ya she she. Kilo le she. What does thou work? What can you do? What can you do? Not who are you? I pray that you'll be asking the Lord, who are you? Not what can you do? You see, this was the question Saul asked Jesus that turned his life around. He said, who are you, Lord? Hey, you do remember that story. When he met him, he said, who are you, Lord? Friends, you must be asking him, who are you, that I may know you. Are you with me? What can you do? No, 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 go back. I've left it. What can you do? What sign shows that that we may believe? These people are, I wanted to say crazy, but don't let me say it. But that was what I'm saying in my mind. You understand? These people are not serious. Like, someone you took sheep to run after. And after finding him, you said, Rabbi, where have thou been? You are now saying, what sign she wears thou then that we may see and believe? <laughs> ah! These are strange people. So that means all the chasing that they were chasing, they, ne- they didn't believe. Ah, yeah, ah, yeah. Guys, are you understanding? People spend their money, spend their resources to took sheep, they risk their life on water. They took their children on water. They could have sunk. They could have died in the journey. They, they were chasing him. Rabbi, when did you come here? We miss you. I sure want you believe. Ah. One sign she was down, then down we may believe. You see? All the story, story, story. Eh, bread, no bread, jail. Well, I don't understand people. You had money to take sheep. You have, you have money to buy bread now. <laughs> Are you following me? She bread in one gong bang. <laughs> oh, one. Oh, 18 days of one free. Eh, oh, that poor. 
Then one day, one year, two cool, twelve baskets. <laughs> I mean, you like it, funny, oh. Oh God, she will like it, Fasha. <laughs> what sense she wears other than we may believe, we may see and believe thee. What doest thou? Eh? Uh-huh. What does thou work? She will look. She kill only she. She will feel no call. She man feel no more. She man feel no she. Like, can you give me visa to go to the abroad? Are you understanding me? Uh-huh. You see, Jesus was talking about something serious. Their conversation with Jesus was from the place of their carnality, of their lust. Hey, our, our spiritual father taught us at SOD. He said the devastating consequence of what? Of lust. See, Jesus having real conversation with them will turn their life around. But they were engaging that truth from where what? From their loss. Eventually they went back. See, what was Jesus, what was Jesus saying? What were they saying? They were speaking from their loss. I'm sorry that I went in the direction. Well, verse 27 is down to look at, but I feel the Lord just must go here. And if I was careless, I think it's a beautiful carelessness. Amen. Verse 27 is the, is the plan for today, but let's just continue. Amen. Our fathers did it manna in the desert. Amen. Our fathers what? Did it manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Okay? Can you see that it's about bread? Even when, go back, even when they spiritualized it, you understand? The conversation is still bread. Guys, you see, if you don't deal with your lust, you will spiritualize it. You will spiritualize it. You will find scriptures for it. And that is the pathway to perdition, to destruction. If you don't deal with your lust, you will spiritualize it. What was in them was lust for bread. They quickly look for scripture. They quickly look for the wonders of God. Oh, the God of wonders is here to do his wonders. You know, are you with me? They quickly backed it up. They ensure. May your spirituality not be fought by carnality. <laughs> Are you following? Our Lord is it manner in the desert as it is written, as it is written. You see, each time they read the scriptures, <laughs> each time they did Bible study and see Jesus, what their heart sees in everything is their lost. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. When they read their scriptures, what they see is bread. For God loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Okay, so that his son can give us bread. <laughs> because without the son, you can't have bread. So the son distributes the bread. <laughs> the bread of life. You understand? So everything they see, for it is as it is written. You don't understand? These people are not small people. Like, he did yeah. They read the Bible. They read the scriptures. But they read it from their lust. Are you with me? As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Okay. Then Jesus said unto them, Very, very, I said unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Uh-huh. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and give us life unto the word. Uh-huh. No quarry. <laughs> Baba. This is what? Squishy is in your head though. But you because Jesus so. You see, when lust is in your heart, no matter how much God speaks to you, to be bouncing on your lust. Ah! Blessed are the pure in heart. What will happen? For they shall see God. You can't see God when your heart is polluted with lust. You can't see him. Jesus Christ kept trying to show them God. Kept trying to show them the truth. But lust at eating up their heart. May God purge your heart of lust. Friends, I say may the Lord purge your heart of lust. Ow! See the sound doctor. See the depth that Jesus Christ was saying. They took him to scriptures. 
Our father's head man, he explained it to them that, okay, actually the head man, it, but it was not Moses that gave them. It was God that gave them. And what God was doing, it was, it was, it was a shadow of the true bread that will come from heaven. And I am that bread, actually. God was just u- using that manna, that bread, as an example of what he will do in the future. You, you, he explained to them, oh, did you know he explained? Let, let's read it again, let's read it again, let's read it again. Then said Jesus on them, very, very, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father, it was, not, it was my father that gave you. And the reason is because he gave you the true bread from heaven. So that bread is a sign, a testimony of the true bread that will come. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and give him life unto the world. I have explained to you what you said from scriptures. Okay, in case the Bible will buy you in cotton solely. This is what it means. But lost had eaten up their hearts. Okay, what did they say? Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore, give us this bread. <laughs> evermore, give us this bread. Catch up my bread, Lord. <laughs> no bakery, but there's bread. There's always bread. Bread without bakery. Evermore, give us this bread. Evermore, give us this bread. So they were still talking about their loss, their carnality. But Jesus Christ now kept talking, talking, talking to explain more, more, more that Amy will buy your bread rather than down. That was when they got to where they were offended and left him. We are. I shall leave the telephone and bread anymore. Bread is the tiny factory. We are miracle to the company. We are one ranger going to go to more. He became offended because they were looking for bread. And Jesus Christ was not ready again to give them the bread. So they said, oh. So he can't give us what we want, Jerry. He can't give us bread. Let's go back. Friends, what happens if God does not answer your prayers? You used to be working with him. You used to be working with him. This is like a prayer point. Oh. Then say they unto him, Lord, evermore, give us this bread. Do you understand? <laughs> They turn into a prayer point. Lord, evermore, give us this bread. Give us this bread. Give us this bread. <laughs> Let me hear you. Say what? Well. Yeah. You understand? So as if they read a scripture and the light dawned on them. They also say, I am the bread from heaven. This is the bread. Ah, Rev. Bread day. Katusu fire by Evermore, give us this bread. See, even though they are as if they were praying a spiritual prayer, their lust was what was praying, their heart was asking for something kind of. They don't need a prayer request. A prayer point. Lord evermore, give us this bread. They wake up every day. Lord evermore, give us this bread. We take the bread today. We take the bread. We evermore give us this bread. You just say, Me, I know they say bread, though. Me, I know they do bread, though. <laughs> Now one way I give you that time. Now occasion, demand for ammo. Don't be bread that can't give you now my life, now eternal life. So they found out that Jesus Christ was not in the business of giving them bread. Hey, guys, Jesus is not in the business of satisfying your lust. That's the real point we are to talk about this evening. He's not in the business. So he doesn't care about your lust. Are you following me? He doesn't care about your lust. He has no plans to satisfy your lust. Friends, can you hear me? Jesus Christ, what? Has no plans to satisfy your lust. He has no plans to bring your desires to pass. Only your desires, which are in line with His will, will He bring to pass. <laughs> Are you fine? Are you, are you with me? So when these guys found out that Jesus Christ was not a baker, that doesn't make bread. Are you with me? It dawned on them. They went back and stopped working with him. Are you with me? What do you do with uns- unanswered prayer points? You see? And can I tell you? Can I talk to you? Is a prayer answering God, right? But he moves to answer prayers that are according to his will. 
Hmm? We know that he what he hears us when what we pray according to his will. Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. You see, you will have so many unanswered prayers when you are not praying according to his will. Are you with me? You will have so many unanswered prayers when you are praying according to your lust. You see? And if you don't quickly deal with your lust, when you have so many unanswered prayers, you will soon become offended at the Lord. <laughs> are you with me? Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Are we still together? Amen. Glory to Jesus. Shout hallelujah. I wish you together, my friends. We must be careful. There is Jesus we want. Verse 27, which, which is what we want to look at today. Let me see where I can stop in that conversation. Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for that meat which endures unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father seed. Praise God. Shout hallelujah. Labor not for what? For the meat which perisheth. For things that perish. He says don't labor for it. Can you say don't labor for it? That means it is possible to labor for it, as I've been showing you. For things that perish. Okay? You see, and to labor means you are spending a lot of resources. You see, some of us even use God's resources that he gave us to labor for meat that perish. Are you following? So Jesus was giving an injunction. He said, don't labor for things that perish. Guys, a command has come to us from the Lord. That it is now time that we stop laboring for what? For things that perish. Are we together? You will find, find out why. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for what? For that meat which endure unto everlasting life. So Jesus the Lord wants us to labor for what? For the meat which endures to what? Everlasting life. What's the meaning? He wants us to labor for eternal things. For spiritual stuff. For things of eternal value. Are we together? You see? But he first calls us to not labor for the meat that perishes, right? But as you labor for things of eternal value. Can you hear me, my friends? Because you see, when you spend your energy... When you spend your resources laboring for things that perish, you will have no energy left to labor for things of eternal value. Do you understand? When you spend your life laboring for what? For things that perish. You will have no life left to labor for what? Things of eternal value. So Jesus wants us to spend our life Laboring for things of eternal value. Okay? But the man who will labor for things of eternal value must be a man who is not laboring for things that will perish. If you are going to labor for the things of eternal value, you must have stopped laboring. For things that perish. You see, many of us are not having a hold on the eternal treasures of God because we still have so much hold on the things that perish. You see, it's not like you can have the two. No, you can't have the two. You have one at a time. Are we together? So, if you are busy laboring for the things that perish, are you following me? You have no privilege to labor for the things of eternal value. Are we together? But for the thing 
is for the, for, for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life. Glory to Jesus, Savior. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus wants us to what? To labor on things of what? Eternal value. But there's something serious here. And it's a labor. And it's a labor. Now, something is peculiar to both the things that perish and the things of eternal value. What's common to them? Can you say labor? That means you can't get any of them without what? Labor. Can you hear me? I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Amen. Don't labor for meat that perish, but labor for meat that goes to a father's life. Huh? Don't labor for perishing things, but labor for the things that what of eternal value. Are you following me? You see, I want to focus today on how we must labor on things of eternal value. Are we together? You see, things of eternal value don't become your own by desire. Are you with me? Can you hear me? Things of what? Things of eternal value don't become your own by what? By desire. They become your own by what? By laboring. You labor. Are you with me? You labor. You labor. (laughs) And part of your labor for the things of eternal value is to stop laboring for the things that perish. Did you hear me? <laughs> Are you with me? Part of what? Part of your labor for what? For the things of eternal value is what? Is, what? is to stop laboring for the things that perish. You see, when you want to begin to labor for the things of eternal value, the first victory you must have is to stop laboring for the things that perish. Are we together? Amen. When you want to begin to what? To labor for the things of eternal value, the first victory you must have is what? Is to stop laboring for what? For the things that perish. You see? But I'm interested in this because it's Jesus Christ that said it. Practically, if some people giving the energy to pursue earthly things, then he says, convert that energy to pursue eternal things. What does it mean to labor in this context? Is to give your heart to seek it. <laughs> Are we together? Does it mean to sweat? You know what? To give your heart to pursue it, to give your heart to seek it, to chase hard after it. That I may know him. I count everything as what? As dung. Do you understand now? I don't labor for those things, for earthly things. Are we together? Go back. Amen. Shout hallelujah. But labor for what? For the meat that they don't want to everlasting life. Amen. So friends, now you see, we must now begin to invest our energy on things of eternal value. Are we together? There is now a call of God upon us as a church, as a people, to now begin to what? Invest our energy, our life, on things of what? Eternal value. There's no time anymore. It is the day of the Lord, the day of harvest. A trumpet sound has been blown, has been raised, an alarm has been raised. For the people of God to now arise. Are we together? You see, can I talk to you? The hardest thing to deliver a man from is laboring for things that perish. Because it's natural. Do you understand me? It's natural. The man will think you are an evil person that show oh, can make a lie in me. Like you don't want me to succeed. You don't want me to overcome oh, take back. You understand? It's very difficult. You see, when God can successfully deliver you from laboring for things that perish, 
His work is finished. Because once you are delivered from what? Laboring for things and perish. What you automatically do next is to what? Is to labor for things of eternal value. Are you following? So, one of the works, major work, that God wants to do in the earth is to deliver people from what? From laboring from what? For things that perish. But you see, how does God deliver men? God delivers men by using men. Are you following me? So, people at your workplace that are doing the same work, they see the way you are doing the work. Still with energy, with passion, right? With excellence. But they see that there's something of higher value to you than the work. They see that your Christianity means a lot to you than the work. That because of your Christianity, of your Christianity, of your work with Jesus, you can't do some things at work. You, don't, you can't do some things in the work. Are you following me? Now, even though this guy is excellent at his work, there are some things that he will not still do in the work, for the work. Are you following me? Because of his work with Jesus. Are you following me? So they find out that actually this guy too, even though he's our colleague, there's something else he's laboring for. Are we together? You see? To labor for things of eternal value does not mean you quit your job. <laughs> You'll be hungry. Doesn't mean you quit your job. Doesn't mean you stop your business. Doesn't mean you gather in church wait, 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 waiting for Jesus to come. We are not baffling, we are just waiting for Jesus, we are praying, fasting. No, that's not the meaning. Are you following me? It's a posture of the heart that reflects in every other thing you do. Are you following me? When you are laboring for eternal things, it shows where? In every other thing you do. It shows in your business. You can't tell lies like others. You can't cheat people like others. It shows in your commitment to your work. It shows in everything. It shows in your career. It shows at work. Are you with me? So don't think that laboring for eternal things means you should quit your job or stop engaging earthly things. No, 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 no. Are you following me? Can I can I can I tell you what it means? To labor for eternal things is to do natural things with Jesus in view. Are you following me? Are you with me? Is to what? Do natural things with what? With Jesus in view, with eternity in view. Are you with me? Praise God forever. Do all things as what? As unto the Lord. How many things? things. Only prayers. Quit your job for the Lord. Don't engage school because of the Lord. What should you do? Do all things as unto the Lord. So go to school as unto the Lord. Engage school with the Lord in view. Let the way you do your own school, the way you do your academics, let it be with the Lord in view. Your colleagues know that this is this guy. We are we are both in school, but this guy's life is different. This is not something else he's laboring for. Are you following me? So what, what did I say? What does it mean to labor for eternal things? It is to engage natural things with what? With Jesus in view. It is to engage natural things with eternity in view. As unto the Lord. It is to do all things as unto the Lord. <laughs> Are we together now, my friends? You see. God wants to deliver people from laboring for things that perish. Hmm? And it is you and I that is going to use. Okay? But if he's going to use us, he has to first deliver us ourselves from what? Things that perish. From laboring for things that perish. He has to make us a people that now labor for things of what? Eternal value. I think I'll stop here today. I'll pick it up from the next week. So the emphasis of tonight is that what? We now have to what? Labor. Can you say labor? Can you say labor? We now have to labor for things of eternal value. 
We have to put all our heart in seeking Jesus. We have to put all our heart in seeking the Lord. We have to now pursue the Lord vehemently. We have to now be voracious in our pursuit of the Lord. And this kind of engagement we show in our natural engagement. To show in the way you do business, to show in the way you engage your boss, your colleagues, school, your environment, your neighbor, it will show. Okay? Because the Bible says we should be wise in the way we live amongst those who are not what? Believers. Are you with me? It's now time for your what? Your light to shine for all men to see. Praise God forevermore. Guys, desires don't bring anything to pass in the realms of God. It is labor that does. Are you following me? We now have to go all out looking for Jesus. We now have to go all out serving the Lord. We now have to go all out doing the Lord's work. We now have to go all out engaging the Lord. We now have to go all out engaging our local assembly. We now have to go all out serving our church, serving our pastors, serving our leaders. Are we together? We now have to go all out impacting lives and changing people's lives. Bringing them to Jesus. We have to go all out telling people about Jesus. Saving the lost people from the fires of hell. We now have to labor for things of eternal value. You see, how would it feel when someone meets you in heaven and say, oh, thank you, Stephen. It's because of you that I'm here. I would have gone to hell. How would it feel, Sister Mercy? Those are things of eternal value. Don't let someone point to you. Looking at you in heaven, and you, the person is in hell and you are in heaven. The person say, ah, and me and Stephen were classmates. The guy was always teaching me algebra. He was always teaching me design. Teaching me coding. He never talked to me about Jesus. She was always sewing fine, fine clothes for me. But she never told me about Jesus. If she had told me about Jesus, maybe I would not be here. Are we together? It's not time to labor, my friends, for things of eternal value. A soul snatched from hell is a thing of eternal value. A teenager delivered from addiction is a thing of eternal value. Taking the gospel to lost souls is a thing of eternal value. Are we together? Delivering people that are oppressed by Satan is a thing of what? Eternal value. It is now time to labor for things of eternal value. May the Lord bless us. I'll pick it up from here next week by God's grace. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name.